Hey everyone, this is Fabri Lion and welcome back to part, take two of this video. Um, this is something that I wanted to do in a long time, especially after watching a video a couple of weeks ago um, reminding me that I really wanted to do this video. I tried yesterday but for whatever reason my camera decided that not to work. So um, and the reason that um, trigger me in doing this video was that uh, I was vegging out watching videos on YouTube and all of a sudden I had like I saw a recommendation for a video that I already saw and that was James and Mike uh, playing Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde on the NES so I remember that I already saw that of course and said, oh that's a lot of fun I really enjoy watching them cursing this horrible game so I watched it again and watching that remind me about this topic I want to talk in a long time and that is tolerance for bad games something that we can all relate it to I believe um, especially us older guys uh, all of us who grew up during the NES era and also the Super NES era when uh, diff uh, very different from today um, about finding out if a game was good or bad. Um, today, nowadays, it's really it's really easy because thanks to the internet, we have all the information that we want about certain games, good, um, old or new, good or bad. And um, but in a way, it also um, takes away part of the fun, maybe part of the mystery of the discovery. Um, since its internet bombards you constantly with everything you want to know about that the, the certain game that you're interested in from the day it's announced to the day it's released. And to me, personally at least, it's something that takes away the charm of uh, progressively discover a certain game. But that's another point. Um, back uh, in the old days, the only way to know if a game was good or bad was of course by reading magazines. In my case, I started to get into video game magazines uh, during the PlayStation One days, um, while reading PlayStation official PlayStation magazine. That was its name. Um, sort of, uh, sort of um, suggested me what games were good or bad or deserve my attention even though we always have to remember that just like magazines the internet YouTube like people like me uh, who talk about things I like or don't in a certain games people who actually do reviews uh, magazines still always remember to filter the information because it's always personal matter I might say good things about a game but then you try it and don't like it because you have different tastes than me, of course. And that was the same thing with the um, magazines. And the, the sad thing is it's a dying industry because of the internet. There's still some magazines, but not as many as uh, back in the days. And during the NES, Super NES days, I didn't read magazines. I wasn't that much yet into games that I maybe I I buy a, I occasionally bought a magazine here and there but not regularly like official PlayStation magazine I subscribed to it I received it every month I was obsessed with that that was the best day in the month when I received the magazine before that I didn't really care uh, and as a consequence I wasn't well informed about good or bad games. Also because, especially earlier, so when I was much younger, um, during the NES data, so we're talking about 25 years ago, something like that, um, our judgment for games was very different. Um, what triggered our interests were different stuff. Basically it was the cover, it was the title, and if we if those uh, caught our attention, we maybe looked uh, on uh, to the back of the box and read the brief synopsis of the game to say, um, yeah, I want to rent it, I want to buy this. And this mechanism, this pattern, caused a lot of mistakes. I mean, I bought a lot of bad games, and usually while I'm discussing the games I play recently, I, for the most part, I realize. 
enjoy the games but that's simpler because as a collector I've no interest in having complete collection because I want to play the games that I think I might like so um, I will never have a complete collection of the PSP for example I've got a game here because I know there are plenty of games I have no interest in into. so I try to get the games that I might like thanks to the internet or uh, magazines I'm able to look to, for games that I'm interested before that it was much more random and fun in a certain way but the, the danger of um, getting a bad game was always there ready to uh, ruin the magic of getting a new game because at the same time not only not only it was um, there's no way to know if a game was good or bad um, at least for me um, I couldn't have games that often, so it was basically three, four times a year so if I was very lucky, because usually it was the birthday Christmas pattern and then maybe something else. And uh, I got some examples of certain games that are bad, that I don't like, uh, but the key here, the, the, the main focus of the video, is that even though these games were bad, I played them constantly, over and over again, for the simple reason that I didn't have a chance. It was those games or no games. It was like this shitty game or nothing, until the next time I was lucky enough to get a new game. The big difference today is that since it's much, much more easy getting games, uh, because I'm financially independent, for example, I can buy, I can buy games whenever I want, um, I can get, I can buy them more often. Um, if I don't like a certain game, even after all the precaution that I want, um, I stop playing it because I don't have time to waste on to waste on a bad game that I don't like. And it happened on other two games that I have here. But let's move on to the old days because these are really funny. Because I hate this game, but I love to talk about them because they're so nostalgic to me. And the first one, it's probably my favorite, and I freaking hate this game. It's called Robo Warrior on the NES. Now, Robo Warrior, where do I even start with this? Um, I was really young when, it, it's one of my first NES game actually, like one of my first five or six games, something like that. And for whatever reason, my parents decided that I was a good boy and I deserve a new NES game, so it was a big day for me. So we went to the toy store and uh, started to look am am among the NES games, and all of a sudden this game, the title Robo Warrior caught my attention, and it had a really cool cover. There was this warrior, of course, the this sort of Terminator looking guy holding a big rifle. So I, oh, this looks interesting. There was like two planets, a skull flying around, I was this is awesome, let's get this. And I was so anxious to play this game, like, oh yes, I'm gonna play Robo Warrior, I'm gonna love this amazing game, I'm sure of it. Um, I put it into my NES, and after 10 minutes I knew that um, this game was bad, that I didn't like it. Because after 10 minutes I died already, without knowing why, it's like, what happened? Why? Am I die? Why am I deaf? Basically, Robo Warrior, it's a Bomberman kind of game. I didn't know that, of course, at the time. Um, I was expecting something like Contra Probotector, as we call it in Europe, because I saw like a big robot with gun. I say, oh, it's like Probotector. Awesome. Absolutely not. <laughs> Uh, basically, you are this uh, warrior drop on into a hostile planet. You have to go around destroying trees with bombs and kill enemies with both your rifle and bombs. And after a while, there is a time limit. After a while, you are going to die if you don't find certain objects that I still haven't understand what you're supposed to find, what are you supposed to do, and where are you supposed to go. It's a very cryptic game. Um, of course, back then I didn't look at the distraction. Um, I didn't care about anything. I just wanted to play the game. And the thing is, even though after the first 10 minutes I knew that I didn't like it, I kept playing and playing. And still to this day, sometimes I still play in Robo Warriors because it just put a big smile on my face for whatever reason. And it also had some 
kind of good things. Like I, it has some good music. The, the the theme of the first level, or at least I think there are other levels. I have no idea. I never I never survived long enough. It's so damn catchy. I really like that music. And you place these huge bombs, and it's kind of a cool game. I I hate that. I hate Robo Warriors. Like after a while, I still remember that the, the screen goes entire all black. So of course, it's one of the NES games that you have to find the lamp. The lamp goes out of oil after two seconds, so you have to find oil. Um, you have to do something to advance in the game. I have no idea. I still haven't figured the game out. It's really cryptic. And the, the thing that drove me crazy, and still, it still drives me crazy, is that if you wait on the title screen of the game, they tease you with a really cool scene, actually, of the game, and that it's a boss battle against a huge dragon. The first time I saw that, I was super excited. I was like, oh my god, I want to fight the dragon. Let's play Robo Warrior again, and this time I'm gonna get it. This time I'm gonna get to the dragon. It never happened. Uh, I still die after 10 minutes, 15 minutes if I'm lucky. Uh, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. But I still playing this game. I don't understand why, what it is. It just... I kind of like to hate this game. It's really weird to say, it's really weird to explain, but uh, I love the music of that game. I kind of I kind of want to like it, but at the same time it drives me crazy. And the next one, uh, still on the NES, it's probably the most infamous one, both for me and my best friend, because nowadays we play together sometimes, not all the times, and just for a, la a huge laugh, because we still haven't understand this game. I mean, it's not that difficult to understand. We, we know what we're supposed to do, but we s it's impossible to play that. And the game, it's Solar Jetman. And um, Solar, basically, for I think that the game is like, you're supposed to go around this planet, find parts of your ship, going back to the mothership with your shuttle and build something. Uh, I never managed to went past level 2. Basically because the controllers, the controls in this game are atrocious. They're horrible. Trying to maneuver that shuttle, uh, if you are capable to, you deserve a medal. Because it's so easy to lose, lose control of that fucking thing and uh, very easy to die, and when the shuttle explodes, you're this little tiny uh, astronaut that you have to go back to the mothership in order to replace the shuttle and try it again. Uh, it's terrible, I hate that game, and with my best friend, uh, sometimes we play it again, we laugh so hard, because uh, I still remember when we bought that game together, I bought it, he went with me, uh, we tried at this place, and after Two seconds, like, what the fuck is this thing? Uh, and we just, like, swapped the controllers around, had a blast, and we still have sometimes. It's really an infamous one, and... Yeah, I still haven't figured it out, Solar Jetman, man. It's... Uh, I, I, I hate that game. <laughs> but at the same time, it's so nostalgic, because I still remember when we bought it. I still remember when I played it, I was... It, was, it shocked me. It boggled him. It's like, wow, you bought a really good game, Fabri. So, <laughs> another one. This is also a good one for me. But uh, as I said, I, we're still playing Solar Jetman. It's unbelievable. I don't like that game. I played it sometimes. Well, let's try Solar Jetman. It's like, after level 2, it's like, what the fuck? Oh, Solar Jetman. Another good one, it's on the Super NES, so we're skipping to the next generation. Um, uh, on a certain occasion, I don't remember when exactly, but once, for my birthday, um, f uh, f some friends of ours gave me for my birthday uh, the VHS of The Page Master. And I heard about that movie back then, I watched it, and I didn't like it. Uh, I still don't like it very much. I mean, it's an okay movie, but I thought it was kind of lame. Um, it didn't impress me, the mix between live action and animation, but it's not horrible. But I just don't like it very much, personally. So, okay. Um, 
next the following year for the following birthday the same people uh, gave me the page master the game for the Super NES I was like wow you really liked page master because I didn't so I was stuck with this game and for the rest of the year basically I didn't have any new game so I was stuck with that and page master is basically a kind of mediocre uh, platform side-scrolling game on the NES, uh, like Mario, but much worse. And you go around through the three different world, like horror, uh, adventure, and fantasy. And I didn't like that game because it's a really wonky uh, platformer with bad controllers, uh, and it drove me crazy. But I kept playing it until I beat that game, because different from uh, Robo Warrior and Page Mast and uh, Solar Jetman. I actually beat <laughs> Page Master because it's much more linear, much more easy to understand what you're supposed to do. Con contrary to those other two damn things, so I, it took me a while because I didn't like it, and it's kind of hard because it's the kind of hard because of shitty controllers, and that's the worst kind of hard. I think it's not because the game is challenge you. It's because it's just badly designed. And but I remember that I kept playing over and over again. Let's play some Page Master. Fuck. <laughs> but simply because I was stuck with that game. I didn't have anything new. Uh, at the time, one of my favorites and one of my first games on the Super NES was Mega Man X. My favorite Mega Man game. But uh, I finished that game so many times already but sometimes I prefer replaying certain levels of Mega Man X because the game is friggin amazing instead of playing the new game Page Master that sucks so hard to me but after a while like well I have to play something new I played Mega Man X seven times already let's play Page Master yay ugh, ugh. but I finished it I managed to beat that stupid game um, it's not that it's really long or really challenging, it's just bad. I didn't like it because I didn't like the source material. But the interesting thing is I said that in all these cases, I kept playing and endured the dislike that I had for these games. And I really didn't like them. Apart from the nostalgia and the fun of it, as a gamer, I knew that these were bad games. Like, Robo Warrior is probably the first game that made me uh, realize, oh boy, there are bad games. Because up until then, I only played good games. I played Mario, I played Zelda, I played Mega Man, I played Castlevania, I played DuckTales. These are great games. All of a sudden, I played that piece of shit of Robo Warrior. It's like, oh, it's not. Perf the video game world it's not perfect what is going on it's that realization but I still playing them later I can tell that there's something's very different now I bought a certain game for the Wii and that game is Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles the Crystal Bearers and uh, I bought it on Amazon and I read some reviews and they weren't really encouraging. It's like, mm, this game is kind of mediocre, it's nothing special. I say, oh well, it's a Final Fantasy game for the Wii. It's actually the only Final Fantasy game on the Wii. I think there are others, I'm not sure. But, I mean, it was the big Final Fantasy on the Wii. At the same time, we had 13 on the 360 and PS3. I mean, how bad could this be? It's still Final Fantasy. At least it was really cheap. I, I think I paid three pounds, five pounds, something like that, and it's okay, I can bear that, but um, I really didn't like this game. Maybe in the future, maybe I will try it again because the controls were horrible. Of course, being on the Wii, they have to program the game to be played with the motion controls. It doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. Uh, I play for half an hour. I stop playing. I think, this is horrible. I really don't like this. Also, like the voice acting and the graphics, all these things, I don't mind even if they're kind of bad. But because of these horrible controllers, they I was so angry. 
I was really irritated. It's like, but let's play something else uh, for the better because I was almost at the point to throw my Wii remote to, to the ground. And I'm like, let's let's try something else. Let's play some Robo Warriors. It's more fun than this. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, I stopped playing after half an hour. I haven't played it again. Simply because at that moment, I had so many other games on different systems. I had new NES, SNES, PS1, Wii, uh, Xbox game that I still had to play. I had plenty of choice. So I wasn't stuck with stupid crystal bearers. Maybe you're a fan of this game, uh, I don't mean to insult anybody, but I really didn't like this game, and I was like, I'm done, I'm not touching this crap again. Maybe I will try it again another time, with more patience, maybe it was just the impatient on that certain day, it was like, I, I was on a bad mood, who knows, but that game really took me off the wrong way, I was like, oh, I will never play this again. And I didn't, I haven't touched it since, and uh, I have no intention to play it in in uh, in the next future. And finally, the last example of a game that drove me crazy, but in a different way from then Crystal Bears, it's Oshikami on the DS. <sighs> this is one of the games that drove me crazy the most, actually, because I wanted to like this game, contrary to Crystal Bearer, because I was kind of expecting a bad game from that, or at least a mediocre game. But Oshikami, I bought it from a store, so I didn't read any review or anything like that. I know, my bad, but um, I was just going around and like, oh, some DS game, let's take a look. It was when I was living in Nottingham, and the DS was my only console. And... Um, I saw this game as, oh, it's a strategy RPG on a DS, it's really, it has that anime style look that it's always a soft spot for me, I always like that. I was like, let's try it. The thing is, it wasn't that cheap, because it was not really brand new, but almost. And Oshikami on the DS, I think it's a re-release of the PlayStation 1 game, so I was like, how... Uh, of course this is going to be great. <sighs> um... It's not that it looks bad or it plays bad, it's kind of wonky, but not too much. I mean, the problem with the game is it's so hard, and I don't mind hard game. And it's not as hard as, like, Page Master with shitty controllers. Uh, it And I played really hard game in my, time, in my days. I mean, um, I played Castlevania uh, constantly. Uh, I beat some Castlevania games. Um... I beat like uh, Port of Ruin, um, Dawn of Sorrow, uh, Order of Ecclesia. These are hard games. I beat Ninja Gaiden on the Xbox on the harder difficulty. That's insanely difficult. Panzer Dragoon Orta, even more difficult on harder difficulties. So I beat difficult games. Uh, the problem is, um, well, first, those are good games. Oh, Shikami, it's really mediocre. Uh, the thing is, um, I can understand difficulty spikes like in the middle of the game, towards the end of the game, uh, I can accept that. I cannot accept an insanely spike like at the second level of the game. I mean, already there, I was having a really, really hard time. I mean, my soldiers was just getting slaughtered, and I didn't do anything in the game yet. I mean, wow! I just started this, and after 30 minutes, it's already impossible. Hmm, this is going to be fun. But, differently from Crystal Bears, I tried a bit, not as much as Robo Warrior, but I tried Oshikami because I kind of want to like it. It looked okay. I, I haven't played in a while, so I don't remember it very, very well, so maybe if I try it now, I would not like it very much. Uh, I also have such a bad memory with that because it was freaking impossible since the beginning. But... I wanted to like that game, but it let me. It, it was just a major disappointment. I mean, it was like, boy, this game is hard. For the worst, I mean, there's hard and hard. And I kind of tried it. I wanted to like it, but it was impossible. It really made me angry. Um, in that case, I really looked like the angry video game nerd. It was like, this fucking game! 
but um, after a while I stopped playing it. Now it's one of the games on the NES, uh, the DS that I like the least because well I haven't played in a while as I said, but still I had such a bad memory playing the game that I wanted to like it because it made me curious. Probably it's my bad because in this day and age of the internet and and uh, of all the information you want are available to you. I didn't check it out before, but I still kind of like trying the old way, so just trusting my instincts. And sometimes things can, like Oshikami can happen, a game that might be interesting or are, it's appealing to you. It's a huge disappointment. I mean, I love strategy RPGs, especially on uh, handheld consoles. I'm... Hmm, I'm playing right now uh, Jean d'Arc. That game is amazing. It's one of the best strategy RPG I ever played. So I have no problem with the genre. It's one of my favorites. And I like difficult games. I like a good challenge. A good challenge in a game. It's with a, a, cha a balanced challenge. Um, that's why I don't care about playing games on hard if it's not necessary. Um, but with a unfair challenge, that's not fun anymore. That, that's just punishing me. I don't have time for that, not anymore at least. It's not like it's that or nothing. I had other options on the DS. I still tried a little, but after a while I said, well, screw this, I have better games to play, and then I play Chrono Trigger or some, or uh, The Words End With You, that's what's next, and that is a phenomenal game, even though I haven't finished, because there is a massive difficulty spike at um, the point where I'm still stuck it because I haven't played in, in a long time, but uh, still, that's the thing that our tolerance for bad game really changed because of our circumstances. I mean, now that we have more information, more availability, and more access to games, uh, we have no patience with bad games anymore. I mean, back then I can understand hating a bad game. But you're still trying, not because you want to like it. I really don't like Wobble Warrior or uh, uh, for certain things. No, I don't like it very much. But Solar Jetman, I really don't like that game. Page Master, hated it. Um, but I, I played the crap out of those games because it was my only chance to play a new game. Final Fantasy Crystal Bear, stop playing after 30 minutes. Maybe one hour, maybe one hour. Um, that's nothing. Uh, Oshikami, I really tried much more than Crystal Bearer because I pref it, I just, uh, it was a game that I think I might like. I, I thought I could like this game. Huge disappointment. So I stopped playing it after a couple of days this time, not 30 minutes. But still, I didn't have the time or the patience to keep playing it. So there you go, guys. Let me, definitely let me know of some of your most infamous experiences with old or new games that you hate but you kept playing it because you didn't have a chance, and games that you didn't like and stopped playing instantly because you didn't care, you didn't have the time. Thanks for watching, guys, and like always, I see you next time. Take care.